Thank you very much, Your Majesty, Royal Highness, Eminences, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's of course a great honor to be here uh, to speak on this important subject. And uh, I will give a few pointers from uh, a few pointers from neurobiology. Uh, the reason being that we often think about trauma as something happening at one time. But trauma has a long-term consequence, specifically in the young nervous system, in the young brain. And I will, uh, I will speak on this on, based on the uh, model that uh, WHO has adopted. The idea of de developing independence is a part of being, a, uh, a being human. And they have demonstrated, uh, and they have used that model for different types of social measures and uh, societal measures in order to have children mature. And one of the things that have been clearly demonstrated on and on again is that social uh, contagions that uh, invoke stress in children actually push them out of the, uh, independ uh, the square of independence during the life cycle. You do not get the proper work, you have more difficulties in establishing yourself socially and economically. And uh, that's, that's why when, when you look at such a general model, you realize that early childhood trauma and early childhood adverse events is something extremely important to, to look at. Uh, during the course of development, uh, there, are, there are many stages that are easy to identify. The first stage is more, uh, the first uh, picture here is uh, to the left, is uh, about two to three months old baby. And the only thing that, that is on is just the sensory systems looking at the world. And when, the, when you mature and you, uh, you come to the peak of life at the age of five to six years old, and you realize that the metabolism is extremely high, everything, uh, everything goes on at the same time, and you really form your brain during those years. Uh, whereas when you, get, when you grow up and become uh, an adult at the age of 20, most of what you do is plan for the future, as you can see with the high metabolism at fr uh, up at front. But we know that this, this scheme of development, it's part what, what the genes have given each baby. It's also part what biology, how the biological uh, happenings during the early course of life, and of course the environment. And those three together is what really forms this uh, wonderful symphony of brain development. We know that if we do the right thing, the brain develops in the right way. Uh, here, we do, here we did some studies some years ago demonstrating the difference of being able to read and write versus not being able to read and write. And we can show how you actually develop the language system in the left hemisphere by uh, reading and writing. And uh, to go even further up the cultural scale, this is the demonstration of how we can develop the, the cables and the neurons in the brain uh, just from uh, playing the violin intensely, demonstrating how cultural activities actually forms the brain. But just as you can do that in a positive manner, you can go the other way with, uh, with adverse events. We know that effective maturation requires a stable social context and the ability to form a stable social context for your children depends on your uh, own experience as a child. So what about these adverse events uh, uh, that we discuss here, of, uh, for instance, early trafficking? We know that it affects the stress system, and we know that the stress system is, uh, is a collected effect of between the uh, uh, adrenals and, and the brain. And the ability to be in control is something that allows you to, is a really protective measure. But if you remove the ability to be in control and you have strong demands, then you get a stress. And if you have a severe uh, and long-standing stress on the brain, you actually affect, uh, affect the brain development. 
And since this is a pre-programmed uh, maturation that goes from uh, new, new birth at term until the adult, when we're born, the brain weighs about half a kilo, and at, uh, when we're adult, it's about 1.3 to 1.4 kilos. During that time, inflammation, um, stress hormones, and other uh, things that are elicited by stress actually uh, uh, have, can have a very strong influence on the brain development. And uh, recent data has demonstrated that uh, if uh, the, the adverse events happens in the early time between three and five years uh, of age, the, ma the main system that's hit, that is the one that develops the fastest during, those day, uh, during that time. And that happens to be a system that's forming uh, memory and learning. Which means that children that are highly stressed during those times, they come out with a lower than expected IQ. Uh, whereas if you wait, uh, wait until the age of 9 and 10, uh, you, uh, the, the, it's the white matter uh, that, that really uh, develops at that time. And if you go further on up and until uh, puberty and post-puberty, it's the frontal cortex. And the frontal cortex is, is where we make all our plans and our ability to think about ourselves as full social individuals. It turns out that uh, children that, uh, that have these types of stress events during those days, they, they actually have, uh, there are a number of psychiatric uh, issues that come, uh, come up as a result of that, including those of depression, the inability of uh, actually expressing hope and uh, things that we'd normally do not attribute to a brain function, but uh, we can actually see the connection between the two. But there is also a new uh, field emerging over the last few years called the epigenetic effects, and that means that environmental influence transfers back into the expression of the genes. So in spite of the fact that you have the correct genes, they do not express the same way because you have been subjected to stress. And so uh, normally we, we, we would think that the uh, genes would uh, be expressed in the brain together with the environment, but we can actually show that real adverse events uh, propagates back and actually locks down and closes off some, uh, some gene expressions. Uh, and it's called uh, epigenetics. And uh, this is one example demonstrating that since we have two pairs of genes, we can either have one risk allele or uh, zero risk allele, one risk allele or two. And uh, th this is now part of the uh, serotonin system in the brain, which is protective against depression. And it was possible to demonstrate that, ch that if you had no maltreatment whatsoever, uh, uh, very little uh, of depression was expressed. But if you added maltreatment, some maltreatment or a lot of maltreatment, in the end you could see that there was a, co there was a co um, covariance with the carriers and the, the social effect, i.e. it was possible to demonstrate how we are uh, in the uh, uh, variance of biology, uh, the effects of social uh, mis maltreatments is actually ex expressed to, uh, to the population, just demonstrating how, uh, how effective and violent uh, this type of interaction is. And we can, we can also know, we, we can also note that uh, when we look at adults that has been subjected to, uh, to adverse life events and uh, adverse events of, uh, of severe type uh, in, uh, in er at early age, normal risk factors that we connect with uh, uh, low social standing in our societies is enriched in these children with, uh, with very marked physiological effects like uh, increased uh, numbers of cardiac events, increased lung cancer, both due, due to, uh, to a living uh, standard but all, uh, and smoking, of course. But diabetes, alcoholism, high blood pressure, and uh, depression, anxiety, all of those that are big, take a big toll in our social agenda, all of them are overexpressed uh, in correlation with this. 
So, um, the, the, to conclude, uh, we have also demonstrated that these types of events uh, actually uh, stay on for a long time. So a psychological, simple psychological explanation is not enough. We have been able to demonstrate that uh, things like changes in the immune system, in the stress system, etc., they hang on, and the effects on the, the stress effects on the heart system, they hang on long after the adverse uh, events have, have happened. Which means that uh, the, uh, what we come back with is exactly the same conclusion uh, uh, as um, uh, Sister Bonnet just said, namely, we have to go for prevention. Prevention is the only way to go. It's good business with good prevention. Because when we get the train of development uh, the following way with early stress uh, experience that uh, hampers the neurodevelopmental uh, development, that leads to social, emotional, and cognitive impairment that in turn uh, uh, makes you adopt uh, health risk behaviors, which increases the social and biological uh, morbidity and actually early uh, a shortened lifespan as well, and the inability to provide a good measures for the next generation following yourself. This means that it is all about prevention. It's all about prevention. American Pediatric Society have uh, adopted this, and, uh, the, uh, and in, uh, in fighting this type of uh, adverse events by saying that we need better family-oriented measures, we need better educated mental health profes uh, professionals, but above all, we need uh, prevention with a very strong focus in order to be successful. And when we design the way, uh, when we design our societies, it has to go into the basic design of our society in order to handle this for the next generations to come. Thank you so much for your attention.